Hey everybody, Brandon with Bearded CB82. And so uh, due to a lot of questions from a lot of y'all emailing me, uh, messaging me on Instagram as well. Uh, good questions though, a lot of requests to get more into a lot of the new guys, they love the tool series, uh, to get more into some troubleshooting and uh, other things. So today we're gonna go ahead and talk about starters. These big boys, and that's not near as big as they come, neither. And uh, as part of the other system, batteries. And gonna show you kind of what went on today. All right, so primary reason why I decided to do starters and batteries today was, well, um, first off, let me discuss a little bit of our PM process. Yesterday we had a truck in here. Uh, we serviced it. It's an interim inspection, so every 12,500 miles, we do a interim inspection, lube everything. If there's any filters on there that need replaced or if there's any other associated services that have just popped up due to mileage or time, we'll take care of those when we service those. The truck yesterday started fine. Uh, started fine in the morning, started fine moving it out, started fine in the wash bay, parking it out back, bringing it back in. So, because we parked the trucks inside, so they're all ready to go in accordance with uh, how the routes schedule out for the day. Um, parked it just fine, uh, shut off our gas valves and everything else like we always do. And uh, it sat dead, sat dead right across from where I'm at. Uh, now, the occasion that that'll happen and a starter will go out, heck, we can stick a truck in the wash bay, park it out back in the summer and then, or even out front here. And we've had them to where they've just starter died right there. Go back in, nothing, click, click. So this morning, got all my stuff ready. It had a deer guard and a plastic bumper on it. Got all that stuff pulled off. Then I go to pull the uh, battery cables off after I do the main disconnect. Well, first I did get in, try to see if it would start so I could turn the tire so I wouldn't have to take all the other stuff off. Didn't work. Uh, check the voltage on it it said 11.7 or something like that on the voltage i don't know if maybe the driver left the lights on key on whatever and the other guy tried it and shut it off before i got in uh, since he was in this morning working on trailers and nothing uh dropped down to maybe 11.2 just before it might have well it didn't even want to start and uh went ahead and did all that Went to start, turned everything off, hit main disconnect, pull the battery cover off to go disconnect batteries. And ooh, there was a, those didn't look too healthy. And flashed my light around them real fast. And a couple of them were starting to look a little swollen, a little distended along the side. So take all the battery cables off, uh, clean them up real fast, zip tie them up out of the way, start checking batteries. Uh, <laughs> I just checked two batteries, called it good, and started started changing batteries out. And luckily, I didn't have to spend a couple hours changing a starter, uh, just because, well, we've had it happen before. Truck doesn't want to do anything, and it started to find, you know, 10 minutes ago, time for a starter. And 99% of the time, that's what fixes it. In this case, it was the batteries. So on our regular small interval services, we usually don't bother with batteries unless there's a driver complaint. Q air compressor. So back to enough with that little bitty story, we're gonna go ahead and start talking a little bit more about starters as the pump goes off. Well, which is good. I need to get the camera switched back around anyways. Woohoo! Okay, so as you can see here, this starter was taken all the way apart. Uh, why? Because I had to. And this is where, for you guys starting out, this is going to be one of the places to pay attention. Okay. This is the meat of this video. All right. So, as you can count here, I've got one, two indentions before we have uh, for our bolts because this one doesn't isn't stud mounted it's bolt mounted onto the flywheel housing or back housing so 
we've got this starter. This one came off normal. Um, the one on this side, which as you come to the other one, you also count one, two, there's the other one. That one's usually the tough one to get to because you have to ride along here just right, get past this and right onto the bolt for that. Uh, that one's kind of a pain in the butt. That one takes a little bit of feel and getting used to before you can uh, usually knock those out quite readily. You do enough of them though, you're usually all right. But this one came out how it was supposed to, didn't have to dismantle this one to get this one out. On occasion, there might be one with a real, real stubborn bolt or the bolt might have been cross-threaded from before to where, yeah, I've got to dismantle all this so I can get my uh, air gun right up on it, pull it out that way and continue to fix other problems. <laughs> And one quick thing to add to this video as I'm in the middle of doing another starter, do not use red Loctite. Use blue or nothing at all. Do not use red. It sucks. Oh. But this one, uh, which came off of one particular tractor that was, uh, uh, it had a failure on, uh, what was it, the uh, flywheel housing after it had been something or other. But a dealership, uh, I don't know if it was a Freightliner dealership or a Cummins dealership out east, uh, Pennsylvania or Ohio or somewhere along there. Uh, this one was on there from when they did it. And as we'll count, one, two, three. And you count on this side, one. Now what that does is that puts this directly up against the block of the engine to where there's uh, really no getting through here with a, a half inch drive, 12 point socket and extension to get on your bolt. Uh, not with the whole starter and the solenoid right there. It just blocks way too much. You have to dismantle the whole starter just because somebody else didn't pay attention when they pulled the other starter off that you had to reclock the ring on these. And the reclock the ring is pretty easy. It's a T30. You got six of them. Zip them all off with a quarter inch impact. <clears throat> Clock it to where whatever you put pulled off matches up. Zip them all back down and torque them or go over them real good with a ratchet without stripping them off because they hold in there pretty good and uh, you're off to the races to go in and at least be able to set it up to where you're not um, hosing over the next guy. I know I'm trying to keep this PG because trust me, uh, taking this starter off, uh, the sailor and mechanic and everything else in between came out of my mouth taking this guy off. I was not happy. So if you're starting off and you go to do a starter and something doesn't quite seem right, odds are there isn't. Now you're probably asking, well, how did they get this in? They had to take the engine out. They installed this with the engine going back in uh, when they did the repair. That much I remember, and this was a few years ago just because of the truck itself and uh, there was a big hubbub about it because, you know, it wasn't hardly all that old and had a, you know, relatively large uh, engine failure on it that uh, caused it to have to go into the shop. So everybody got to hear about it. But uh, yes, pay attention. If you're pulling something else off, pay attention to how you pull it off and how it looks before you try to slap it back on. Uh, this is how these particular starters, the 83, what is it, 8300309s, uh, 8200308 39MT, uh, come from the factory, is just mounted just like this. I know because every time we get one in, uh, good chance I'm doing the starter. And always on these 12 liter CNGs in these particular Cascadias, this ring will need to be reclocked.
So pay attention. Biggest tip I can give you on those starters, especially if it's in something with really tight quarters, just take the extra couple of minutes and uh, do it that way. I know on the Detroits, the DD13s, uh, even the Volvos, usually take it out of the box after you get the old one down, put it back on the studs, tighten everything down, and you're pretty good to go. Uh, these ones in particular, on these engines, as I found out the first time, which was, uh, oh boy, it was part, when I was still working here part-time, so I'd been, oh, just shy of five years ago. Uh, one, uh, how it had the, uh, had a line mounted, actually wore through one of the wires on the solenoid, and truck only had like 35,000 miles or 50,000 miles. It is a brand new truck. And I had to put one of these guys in and uh, fought it for the first two hours getting it out. And then again, fought it for two more hours trying to get it back up in. Because uh, I didn't pay attention and notice it was reclocked. Uh, then after that, it, it wound up going in a lot better. It just wound up being a five hour starter job, which was the first starter anybody had to do on these CNGs anyways. So boss at that time didn't really care. The truck was able to get up and running and uh, it was kind of a learning experience because same thing, they ran all Detroits and Volvos before then. You just slap them up on the studs and away you go. Anyways, we're gonna go off to the batteries over here and uh, this is a test that, you know, anybody that's been doing this for a little while has done it plenty. Anybody that might have had the opportunity to work at a automotive parts shop has done this before as well. But uh, the tester that we use. So the tester we're going to be using is a Delco Remy Autometer BVA 200 or 200S series. Uh, it's pretty, they work fairly decent uh, as far as using it to diagnose a lot of other issues. I recommend a multimeter, especially if you're going directly off of uh, checking voltage, for instance, on your alternator for your charging voltage, use a good meter. Uh, this thing, mm. and you do have the other style, which is more for your smaller automotive batteries, where it actually, you got the little switch that'll clip it yeah, and it puts a small load on your alternator those work pretty well for at least diagnosing if it's either alternator or battery I got one at my toolbox at home but this one uh, for testing the batteries does do fairly well on a good readout show you how to use it okay trying this again so uh, apparently I forgot to hit record like that doesn't happen so, take our meter, and go ahead, put the negative on the negative, positive to positive, and then, uh, since I already had this turned on, you just press the on-off button, temperature 60 degrees, about what we keep it in here, battery voltage 12.38, press Y to continue. Uh, this is a good battery, it just does need a charge to it. So, preliminary check is just a quick check that this thing does. Tells you 12.4 volts, 69% charge, estimated 610 cold cranking amps. I do know that if I was to put this on a good battery charger, not one of those dumb smart chargers, uh, I can recondition this particular battery. Okay, so cold cranking amps. We will go up. It's a 730 cold cranking amps. So we're going to do 725. Press yes to continue. Then good, needs a charge, 12.2 estimated charge, 71%, estimated cold cranking amps currently, 610. So good battery, just needs charged, uh, that's good to go. Now we're going to check it on another battery. Okay, so one of the batteries that I took off today, check that one, attach that one, battery temp. 
60 degrees, you see 11.9 volts. Prelim okay, charge 6%, estimated cold cranking amps 370. And it's an 800 CCA battery. Testing. So 370 cold cranking amps. Uh, this battery, it does say try charging it. This battery has been bulged out, which I'll show you here. Okay, so one thing to check on your condition of the battery is you see how it's got this bulge coming out, top and bottom. Oh, it's not turning out too great in the camera. Let's see if we can get a better profile of it. There you go. Well, trust me, it's bulged out. So it says, even though it says charge this battery, I would not charge this battery because it's already got a bulge in it on both sides. Uh, that's one more thing to keep an eye on. So there you have it, everybody. A little bit of use on the autometer and looking at some pretty crummy batteries, things to look out for on batteries. And as well, some things to keep an eye out for on your starters. So anytime anything comes in with a slower dragging starter complaint, uh, check batteries. Or if it's a no start complaint, check batteries first. Just takes a couple minutes, see if you got a different issue. And if not, well, you need your batteries disconnected anyway if you already have it in a service bay in a shop in order to change the starter. So you're just right there, who knows, maybe uh, Every company's got a different way in which they change out batteries. This shop, we've got marginal and a bad battery. We'll change out all four batteries. It's going to vary per customer, per person, per shop, per company. But uh, so follow their discretion as well. But yeah, just takes you a couple minutes while you're down there and testing everything. Like this shop, for example, we go ahead and service the battery cables while we're down there, buff them off, and uh, go from there. So anyways, hope you enjoyed, and remember, shop safety is just as important as firearm safety. You screw something up, somebody could die, and we'll catch you all later. Mm -hmm.